Good evening, and welcome to Mental Peace Theatre. In tonight's episode, we are going to discuss how to get the look of English cortisone oak in your home at a fraction of the cost. How does he do it, you ask yourself? Well, stay tuned. Mm. If you've been watching these how-to videos that I've been producing during quarantine, I first off want to say thank you. I hope it's been a bit of a respite from the insanity of the world right now for you as much as it's been for me. Also, if you've been watching, you may have seen me do this hammered copper metal fireplace. If you haven't seen that video, you can go to my Facebook page, Brian McCann, or you can go to my YouTube page. It's there as well. It'll show you how to do that. But now that I've done this hammered copper, which I'm very pleased with, the rest of the wall looks a little wanting. So the product that I'm working with, that I, I love to work with, is MDF. So for my baseboard, I'm going with three and a half inches, just there. And for the styles, I'm going with two and a half inches. And for the rail at the top, I'm going with one and a half inches. What I like to do is dry fit my styles there. So I make sure that the baseboard is perfectly level and then you can build up from there. This is a very handy device. This will tell you where any studs are. Hello. <laughs> Cannot do that joke. It'll also tell you where uh, the electrical lines are. And as you can see, I'm coming close to an outlet here. I would not recommend gluing the baseboards. Glue everything else, the runners and the styles, but not the baseboards. That is, in case later on down the line you would like to change out your flooring, which I desperately need to do, I'll be able to just pop these right off again, change the flooring, and then put them right back on. You notice I put a coat on this edge so that we can go into the corner here. Yes, so that's just a 45 degree cut. All right. So now we're moving on to a bit of the finished carpentry here. Now, if you wanted a mission style chair rail, you could stop right here. That looks quite nice and simple, but I'm going with an old English look. So we are going to add some trim. some detail. You can almost consider this a plate rail here. And I've added the detail. Very simple molding. Covers up your nail heads, uh, which is a great tip, is put your nails where you're going to be placing your molding and you'll have less nail holes to fill. And here we are with nice, clean seams all the way around. But if you were going to paint this white, you would really want to take a lot of time and make sure that you fill every single nail hole, any imperfection whatsoever. I want to talk a little bit about the math of this. 
you see I've got all sorts of angles here. So you have to decide for yourself what is your room like and do some math. What I discovered was this section is 27 inches and from the corner to that light switch is 27 inches. So I went with that, 27 inches each recessed panel. So this is the top of one of the bookcases that I built to flank the fireplace. And I mixed equal parts burnt umber with satin glazing liquid. Again, that's one to one. And I just brush it out with a chip brush. These chip brushes are great for wood graining because it is a little rough. And simply by brushing it out, it gives the effect of wood graining. Again, the base is a satin bear claw from Valspar, and that allows the glaze to slip across it quite nicely. It extends your drying time, which you really want with this wood graining technique. So we just make sure we brush it out and then we level it a bit with the chip brush. Then we are going to add a little knot, and that just requires you to add a wave there. This quarterstone oak is not known for being particularly wavy, but a little bit is nice. Now we're going to be using a rubber wood graining tool. Sometimes you can find these at paint supply stores. If not, you can cut it out of a regular piece of rubber. And just run it through the wet glaze. You don't have to go over the entire board. And then we're going to use a regular rubber eraser. These are fantastic because they have a chiseled point and you can go from thin to thick very easily by simply twisting your hand. These are known as medullary rays and you would want to study quarter sawn oak. There are a few other types of quarter sawn wood, but they're very specific to quarter sawn oak. So they tend to stack one on top of each other. And again, you can be a little artistic with this. Quarter sawn oak is literally that. Instead of cutting horizontally across the trunk, they cut it in quarters leaving a lot of scrap, which makes this wood very expensive to buy, which is why painting is so much more economical. So do have some fun with this. Next, we're going to be using the flogger brush. Sometimes you can find these at paint supply stores. They use it for doing striations like denim or any kind of fabric faux finish. But we're going to use it for the reason it was invented, which is wood graining. And we pounce up and down, rather than dragging it through the glaze, we pounce up and down while pushing it. And what you can see is it softens the somewhat cartoonish look of this wood grain. If you pounce very lightly, as I'm doing here, you get a subtle effect. If you pounce very hard, you can get a really dramatic effect on this. Finally, we're going to use a badger hair softening brush. Now, you're not going to find these at paint supply stores, but you will find them at art supply stores. And it just softens things up. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. You can see I'm going across the grain here. It's not something you ordinarily do, but with quarter sewn, it looks fantastic. Look at that. Very pleased.
Now we're really getting into the nitty gritty of it. Uh, this is a detail that you don't have to put on, but if you want people to be able to walk up to your wall and not be able to tell that it's painted, you can go and online and get what is called a check roller. This is just a series of metal discs that roll freely with individual indentations on it. I found mine online at a place called Wall Art. It's only about 15 bucks. And I've mixed up a glaze of almost pure black. There's just a touch of white in here. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, paint to glaze, satin glaze medium, just like the rest of the wood graining, one-to-one -one ratio. And this tool I find works best if you dip a brush into your mix and hold it up against the roller as you work your way up. It uh, puts just wonderful, more uh, detailed wood grain. What this imitates is decades of wax that have that has embedded into the wood grain. So we're going to use the same mix for the corners, you know, all those areas that wax builds up over a hundred years. <laughs> it also gets into the wood grain and this simulates that beautifully. So you will notice that I vary the thickness, how many passes I do on a single section. Some sections have none of those black lines. And some, like the medullary rays here, these are called medullary rays. I discovered that while doing this project. That is such hard wood that they do not have wood grain. So I just come in with a wet rag and wipe out anything, any of the black paint that got on top. So in order to get that look of really old paneling, I have simply taken the same black that I used with the check roller. The wax buildup in the wood grain will now be applied to all corners, any place where wax would naturally build up over decades of time. Really cover Get in there, get in those grooves, particularly corners, depending on how old you want this to look, you could make it look almost Jacobian, the more of this you add. You notice I round the corners just a little bit, that's how wax builds up, then take a dry rag, fairly dry, and just wipe it down. So there you have it, English quarter sole oak. I do hope you found that delightful and informative. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until we meet again.